Hello, my name is Asbjørn William Amundsbyld Flyge, and I'm a PhD student at the University of Copenhagen. Today I will present uh, my research paper, which I have written together with Professor Thomas Hildebrandt and Assistant Professor Naja Holten Müller, about street-level algorithms and AI in bureaucratic decision-making, a caseworker perspective. In this paper, we investigate how caseworkers perceive the use and possibilities of AI to support or perhaps also challenge the work in public employment services, uh, more concretely uh, job placement. The most important things first is of course the contribution and the contribution of this paper is that it contributes an understanding of caseworkers collaboration around documentation as a key aspect of bureaucratic decision making practices. The collaborative aspects of casework are important to show because they are subject to process descriptions making case documentation prone for an individual focused AI with the consequences for the future of how casework develops as a practice. So what does this really mean? It means that we present findings, and I will come to them in a, in a second, around how caseworkers perceive the possibilities of AI in job placement. But what we really unpacks unpack is how casework, which is a well-described concept within uh, particularly CSW, um, is actually a collaborative practice. And we found that, document, that collaboration in casework is centered around documentation, either through sharing or retrieving documentation. That can be, for example, um, collecting a medical documentation to enlighten a citizen case. Uh, or to share uh, documents with uh, with colleagues, but also that the sheer act of documenting, uh, when case workers write on a citizen case, they are writing something which the job seekers can can see, but they are also using words and sentences which they know how their colleagues will interpret. Um, as one of the case workers said to us, "Well, I'm documenting on a case. I'm writing for the job seeker because the job seeker will see this message." but I'm also writing to my colleagues. The paper is uh, takes a starting point within what is popularly known as street-level bureaucracy, uh, coined by Lipsky, that street-level bureaucrats have discretionary work in bureaucracies and have discretionary power to both enact politics, but also be the intermediary between the state and its citizens. Uh, in recent... Uh, Kai article, uh, Alcatip and Bernstein, coined the um, coined this uh, coined the fact that algorithms take on the decision making capabilities as human street level bureaucrats used to do, thus coining these algorithms as street level algorithms. So that's kind of our starting point. The methods founding this paper was a primary a uh, participatory design workshop with social workers. At the workshop, we explained different kinds of AI for the social workers and then divided them into groups where they had to discuss and dot vote on a citizen journey uh, where, we have, where we had decided or written up uh, the development of a, of a case of a citizen, of a job seeker, and had them uh, discuss different decisions which we had decided on, on prehand, whether or not they thought that AI could support this decision whether AI could automate this decision, or whether AI should just stay away from this decision. To nuance the findings at the uh, workshop with social workers who are not all from job placement, we conducted in-depth interviews with uh, case workers from uh, job placement. We have divided the findings into three, and the first finding which came from the participatory design workshop was that simple decisions are probably a quite a good starting point for uh, implementing AI. We saw a clear tendency, which is illustrated in the table here, that the simpler a decision uh, would be, the more case workers wanted either the, the algorithm to make the decision or that it could advise or support on the decision. Um, so there's like kind of the scale of simplicity and, and, and complexity. Um, and as one of the social workers said, well, I don't know the criteria for when to collect a medical record, but if the criteria are very simple, well, then perhaps an algorithm can make the decision, but it's also dependent on discretion. So simple decisions, pretty good starting point. What then became obvious was that 
uh, there are different contingencies that make simple decisions complex. Collecting documentation is a pretty fairly uh, normal uh, task that caseworkers solve in all as in many aspects of uh, public uh, public services, not only in job placement. And what we found was that uh, there can be these complexities, these contingencies that make this on paper rather simple decision quite complex. For example, caseworkers uh, emphasize for us that building a trustful relationship between a caseworker and the citizen is absolutely critical for uh, helping them to get a job, to move the case uh, uh, further. So, some caseworkers were concerned that if you collect medical documentation at the, dif at, uh, at the difficult or wrong time in the process, uh, this can this can harm the relationship between caseworker and job seeker because it can be seen as an act of uh, distrust for the caseworker size or the need for an act of control over the job seeker. The last finding here is also from is from the interviews in particular. What is quite complex in casework is spelling the uncertainty you have to deal with as a caseworker. Um, the top quote here is from a caseworker who explains how she assigned sick leave to a woman who weren't actually sick but after several years of drug abuse had just started treatment. So she's saying, well then I, I say to her, I am exempting you from it. That's the uh, legal demands of job placement applying for several jobs a week. This means that I'm registering you as being on sick leave until our next meeting so you can concentrate on getting your treatment started. So this is some of the uncertainty that caseworkers deal with, that the caseworker knows or expects that if the woman, the unemployed, the job seeker, need to have a success with her re rehab and treatment, well then she cannot do it while also simultaneously managing, managing the legal demand of applying for jobs. Uh, we we'll touch upon some of these points in the discussion, but what could be interesting could be to map what kind of decisions in what kind of bureaucracy, for example, Lipsky Street Little Bureaucracy or uh, Weber's uh, machine-like bureaucracy, which of these types of bureaucracy are best supported or left alone or automated by which types of AI? Perhaps we can see some relationship there. <clears throat> Another thing for discussions could also be to remove AI from the moment of decision-making as a way of mitigating the potential harms of these systems. Uh, what our study also contributes is that there are limits to how deep an understanding you can get about the issue and the deployment of, for example, AI and job placement if we don't bring context, context, context from domain experts. Uh, if we don't do that, there's the risk that we'll simply just see that Collecting medical documentation is a simple decision. Simple decisions are better suited. Let's just automate the simple decisions. All the complexity that are, uh, are contingent for these on paper, often very simple decisions. A last thing to discuss and for future work is perhaps that we move on from developing and designing uh, AI systems that profile the individual job seeker or the individual caseworker and move on to profile the employment system, the public service system to see where our harm actually going, but also to say, can we develop tools that support job seekers, the, those targeted by the systems? Can we, can we go there, Aaron? Can we support their process of entering and, and hopefully getting out again of, of these systems? Thus, uh, future work uh, for me is to make participatory design workshops with job seekers to say, okay, what are their concerns, needs, and perspectives to the value of algorithmic decision support to support their case? <clears throat> I'll just finalize my talk by saying a huge thank you to my supervisors, uh, assistant professor Naya Holt Müller, professor Henrik Palmer Olsen, and professor Thomas Hildebrandt. Uh, and a huge thank to Innovation Fund Denmark, the Econo Project, and the Independent Research Fund Denmark for the project BACTA. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on email or on Twitter. Uh, I'll answer as quickly as possible. Uh, please do it. Yes.
thank you